So I'm Laura Mersini Halton. I uh, am a cosmologist and a professor of physics at uh, the University of North Carolina. So I've been uh, working on this uh, theory of the origin of our universe from a quantum multiverse. What uh, brought the idea about was uh, uh, the way of thinking that uh, our universe started only 13.8 billion years ago and uh, it's only 10 to the power 27 centimeters. That's 10 with 27 zeros behind. So although th these are large numbers, they are not uh, extremely large. They are not incon inconceivable. And um, it's completely reasonable to ask what was there before, say 14 billion years ago or 15 billion years ago, and what lies beyond the edge the horizon of our own universe. These uh, questions led me to um, propose that uh, we introduce, since the universe was small in its infancy, we introduce a wave function of the universe before our universe went through Big Bang inflation and grew. And uh, we, we address that question of how our universe came into existence by, by using quantum theory, by solving those equations. And then that led to a uh, larger and more intricate picture of the cosmos where our universe is just one of many similar universes that followed similar histories to, to ours and uh, are still out there and we are just a humble member in that vastness of the cosmos. And uh, in that sense, when you think about it, uh, not, not long ago, um, people thought that uh, the Earth was, was the center of the universe and now we are saying that the whole universe is not the center of the cosmos, but rather it occupies some, some corner into that uh, beautiful vastness that we call nature. And um, that's an extension of the Copernican principle to the whole universe. So the, the uh, common uh, way of thinking in cosmology, the, what we call the standard model of cosmology, is that our universe was a, a tiny smooth patch of uh, space-time filled with a lot of energy and, and uh, it was that energy that propelled the universe into an accelerated growth and, and uh, made it grow very large very quickly. That type of energy, the same type of energy, seems to occupy, to dominate our universe at present and that goes under the name of uh, dark energy. Our universe is a blend, it, the, at least the, the ingredients in our universe are a blend of uh, radiation, light, photons, matter, including dark matter, and energy. Energy is the least familiar of all of us because uh, we, we see matter and, and radiation, we, we see light around us every day, so those are familiar concepts, but uh, the energy has got strange gravity properties in the sense that it likes to blow things up. It, it takes a small patch of space and, and it uh, propels it in, into a uh, fast growth, into an accelerated growth. We have come across that type of energy early on and it seems to dominate the universe now. What will happen in the future as our universe grows is that all kinds of uh, matter and, and light will dilute away with, with the volume increase of the universe. However, this uh, type of energy, dark energy, which is very similar to the inflationary uh, energy that uh, produced the universe, that type of energy seems to grow with the volume of the universe because it has a strange property that is density, the amount you can stuff in, in one unit of volume, that density has to remain a constant and therefore the more volumes you produce of space, then the more of that energy you are producing. In short, in, in not so far future, that energy will be the main component left in the universe and therefore it determines how our universe will end. And, and uh, there are many things we don't know what dark energy is in the same way that we don't know what uh, gave that energy of inflation. There are many scenarios on what type of energy, dark energy is and how the universe will end. The, the three big classes are either a cosmic heat death where dark energy is a pure constant, it never varies with time and therefore the universe grows infinitely large but it's completely empty and if there are no fluctuations then it can not produce new structures including humans and stars and planets and therefore everything comes still. That, that is the cosmic heat death in the universe. 
that that's the, the most dreadful of all, all the possible scenarios. Another scenario is that dark energy, although seems to be a constant at the moment, uh, in the far future it might start behaving like matter. In that case we'll have too much matter in the universe and the whole universe will go through a big crunch, like a black hole, where it will vanish in a blaze of fire in one single point. The, the next scenario, which is more of a science fiction scenario, is when dark energy makes the universe grow even faster than the energy of inflation. In that case, the very fabric of space-time will get ripped apart, and that's called the Big Rip scenario. Like uh, almost any human uh, now or, or in the last uh, few thousand years of evolution, I, I uh, approach the question of how our universe came into being and what was there before the Big Bang and what lies beyond, behind the horizon of our universe with that simple childlike curiosity um, without expecting any answer. However, my, my decade-long work uh, along with uh, collaborators led me to a theory of uh, the multiverse, of our origins from the multiverse, which seems to have been successfully tested by observation as well. And I discuss all, all of that in, in my book, as well as um, the, the single-mindedness that is needed and, and the hard work that goes beyond, uh, behind exploring those questions um, as uh, parallels with my childhood in uh, communist Albania.